Hey everybody, Josh RV here with Bish's RV with a br ah ah ah. Sorry, snowflake in the eye. Oh, it's like mm, needle. Anyway, uh, anyway, Ice is back with a brand new invention, a brand new floor plan, the 26 RBS uh, over here by Forest River, uh, under the Salem or Wildwood family. Uh, two names for the exact same RV. And basically, what they did is they took their most popular uh, 26 one slide bunkhouse and a lot of people looked at it and said, you know, this thing is almost perfect for us, but we don't need bunks. What if they got rid of the bunks? Like, have you ever said, what if they got rid of the bunks and just gave it a giant rear bathroom instead? <laughs> That's exactly what they did right here. But uh, it, it, it created an interesting variant to a done to death floor plan out there. You know, like everybody and their brother makes something, they call it a 25 or a 26 rear bath where it's got a big bath in the back, a private bedroom in the front, but the super slide closes the camper off and you can't get to the bedroom in transit. This tweak on that design overcomes that challenge and I was really pleasantly surprised with how good the road mode travel access is on this one. Now we'll get to all the fiberglass details later. Normally this would have a corrugated aluminum side. You've got the Versa lounge inside which can become a giant sofa. It can become a full slide s -s -s super sleeper. It can be uh you know it's it's tons of storage. It can become a U dinette and a common sofa. It can only do everything. Giant rear bathroom and this has a taller ceiling. These have an enclosed heated belly with those cool accessibility drop panels um a, a neat little mini outside camp kitchen they've uh based on your feedback on these videos earlier this year i'd covered a bunch of these and said they don't offer a solar option at this time because of you they are now offering a solar option so your input continues to shape products out there i'm going to go through and try to show you where this one shines and maybe a couple points of concern i would like you to kind of follow up and comment where do they nail it? Where do they fail it on this new model? How can they continue to make it even better? And if you appreciate the fair look at the brand new look at things, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like our video. Now, if you're familiar with uh, a lot of RVs, you might look at this and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, this looks awfully familiar. Like I mentioned, they took one of their more popular models and they basically just chopped the bunkhouse off of it. Um, this is kind of like a, uh, it's called a 26 D bud. Very similar. This is also 20, uh, similar to the 29 V bud, but instead of bunks on the back, they just gave this thing a huge baby got back bathroom. That is very fluffy friendly. If you are larger than the average bear. Now, uh, speaking of which the full Salem, full wildwood, not X light and cruise light, but the big boy that we're in right now, they are six foot nine tall. This is actually the tallest ceiling that you'll find anywhere in like the Salem Wildwood family of travel trailers, even taller as compared to their laminated uh, kin, as it were, kin for my, uh, my my family members who are down in Tennessee. I, uh, I've, I've got, uh, you know, my mom's side of the family, they were Tennessee Ridge Runners during Prohibition. My dad's side of the family historically were horse thieves. And um, evidently they were good at what they did because enough of them lived and didn't get lynched that they managed to, you know, procreate until I was born. But my point is, I've got some kin down in Tennessee way and down there, you know, the names of the, the towns, they pronounce a little bit differently than just a simple little Midwestern Michigan boy might. Like I've got some cousins in what I would call Maryville, but down there, everyone knows it's Merville, kind of like Louisville, you know. Uh, there's just certain letters you don't need to worry about pronouncing. They just take care of themselves. Neither here nor there. Um, this is a feature they added last year that I really like. And the camera might flicker a little bit just because of how it likes to light balance. But if you watch these very closely, you may have noticed uh, how they actually have dimmer lighting now, which is cool. And of course, you know, the whole cabin, you can flick right on or off. I didn't want to say flip on or off. I said, uh, <laughs> last night I told my daughter, I was, I was like, hey, could you flip off the lights in the living room? And she goes, like, with my finger? And I was like, oh, wait, uh, no, I need to rephrase how I, I, I phrase it. Thankfully, I thought it was cool that she asked first, you know, neither here nor there. But where that's really cool is when it's like, uh, you know, evening time, nightlight time, and you're trying to navigate your way back to the bathroom. But that little uh, overhead accent light can also do a heck of a little night light trick, uh, especially if the big super slide is being used for guest sleeping. We're gonna get a look at that in just a minute. First of all though, I told you this thing has a huge bathroom. And overall, the bathroom is one of the only areas in this RV where I have any sort of little nitpicks. I'm not traditionally a, a, a big fan of bigger, wider, open face storage like that. 
Um, I think it's probably a symptom of the fact that uh, Wildwood is still a brand that is trying to make sure they don't get too far beyond a target price point. And sometimes little things like that are kind of the result. But you notice in that big rectangular shower, there's fantastic um, uh, like headroom, elbow room, everything up in there. And that is a Lipitorge storage cabinet. That is not just a mirror mirror on the wall. And you know what? They they didn't uh, they, they certainly didn't hurt themselves on the bathroom fixture right here. But the fact is, you could replace the faucet if it really, really bothered you. And a plastic sink may not look fancy, but the fact is, it's going to get the job done. However, they, they took this concept down there, that cool little slatted kind of storage shelf uh, below the sink. They took that from their destination trailers, and it just it gives it such a cool look, I think. Now, if you want to, you can upgrade to a larger air conditioner. I think, uh, generally speaking, something even this size, even here in the Midwest, for no more than it costs, I would probably upgrade the air myself. Um, the thing here, though, is there's a lot of storage in this RV, and this whole creature over here, I call it a Swiss Army sofa because this is the Versa Lounge, and it only does just about everything. But one of the nice touches in this living room if you notice, blackout roller shades on here. Now, that can fold down into just a giant sleeper, but notice, too, there's all kinds of storage below it. Uh, there's five of those food-safe totes. It's over 20 cubic foot of food-safe uh, storage on there, so lots of Ritz crackers. And notice, too, if you don't care about the Versa Lounge, if you're like, I don't know, it doesn't do much for me, man. It's like Shania Twain. It don't impress me much. Well, you can always convert it to just a standard dinette and sofa arrangement. Now, uh, the big 12-volt fridge is standard. Actually, this group is the reason that a lot of the RV industry has switched over that. They were the ones that really brought it to the mainstream and made it popular. So if you like 12-volt fridges, say, hey, thanks, Salem Wildwood. If you don't, um, well, you know, you know who to blame. <laughs> All sealed edge thermal foil countertops. And this is a new model. But like I said, the front end of this, everything but the bathroom is just basically a rehash of some bunk models that they've made before. And I love that they stopped wasting the space behind the entertainment center. That was previously just a dead air pocket. They just had a couple wires for the TV. But as you notice, it's wedge shaped, which is a little odd, but there's actually really good storage space back there. And uh, the little pantry by the door, also very handy. So this is actually a dual pantry model. But did you notice something? Remember last year, I was constantly harping on the fact that they did not have windows in the entry door. Well, once again, just like the solar stuff that we're going to talk about, your feedback and your input has made all of the difference there. Now, you kind of saw, ooh, I'm running into the wall. You kind of saw this whole space sort of, you know, blown open in storage mode. Let me give you a quick little once over from this direction right here. I also like the little details like the, uh, the toe kick. So you can really belly right up to the kitchen counter. And that might sound like a little thing, but anyone who's actually camped, anyone who's actually done kitchen prep work and dishes, you ever notice how your lower back sometimes just gets really tired and sore after doing that stuff? It's because you're constantly stressing your back and leaning forward. That little one, two inch toe kick makes a huge difference. I also noticed it's behind me as I'm standing here right now though. They've swapped over to a, uh, a white digital thermostat instead of black like they had last year. It just looks a little bit better. They've also swapped out of the carpet once again by your request. Enough people said, uh, we really like this, but that carpet was an, uh, an immediate uh, fail to start. And they said, well, that's stupid. Let's fix it. And they did. Little accent light for your uh, shoe cubby right down by the door. I love that little clutter cutter right there. This does have a, uh, a sliding privacy door here uh, into the bedroom. And something else that's a nice little detail touch. Some manufacturers will give you uh, nice window shades in like the living room. But when you get to the bedroom, you start getting uh, something a, a little more generic or pleated or metallic mini blind. And you might notice that they're using that exact same blackout roller shade all the way through. Down here, this is another big change made based on your feedback. Last year, they had one of those little short camp queens that was sponsored by the Bed Goblin Union, the guys that live under the bed, uh, down where we have all this storage, and they, uh, they, they rip your toes off. Well, giving you a better look at all that down there. Um, that is now, basically, it's called like an Olympic Queen mattress. It is uh, not a short mattress anymore, and it's actually slightly wider. Here's the cool thing. 
It's 80 inches long and it's like 66 inches wide or something like that. And if you don't care about that size, that extra width, you could easily swap in any residential queen that your little heart desires and it's going to fit. Now, when the bed was lifted up, uh, it looks like, wow, a lot of that bed hangs off the platform. That was really exaggerated by the fact that the, the bed platform was in the up storage position. When uh, everything is down, there is a uh, pretty decent normal support under the foot of the bed. So if you try to sit on that to put on a pair of pants, you're not going to end up on the floor. Now, flipping around the other way, you see that this bedroom hidden behind that entertainment center also has this big bonus closet over here. So what this is doing is it's really giving us like the storage of a model with a closet slide out without the extra mechanical items, the extra seals, the extra weight, and frankly, the extra cost of a slide out. And I also thought it would be a good opportunity to go ahead and close the slide out on this one so that you could see something that was a very pleasant surprise to me is with the slide closed, I did not expect to be able to basically navigate through the entire RV. But the fact is that is effectively exactly what I found. Now it does help when it's in lounge mode, when that cushion is in this arrangement right here, because what that lets you do, it's certainly a little tight right there, but it's not extremely super duper tall. So if you do one tall leg step over, you can find yourself past all that stuff. You can get from the bedroom to the bathroom uh, all your kitchen stuff without ever touching the slide out. And that was a major surprise to me. Uh, a very, very happy find in terms of Cracker Barrel functionality. Now, in case you had noticed when this video began, like I got my little neck gator on here. I'm not pretending to be, you know, Josie Wales or whatever, the outlaw. But my point is, it's cold out. It's like 12 degrees outside. This RV was just in the shop. Um, basically, this one's already sold, and they were getting it ready for the folks to leave, and I had a quick opportunity to record it before they finished cleaning the inside so that they can do it once over and erase any sign of me being in here effectively. My point here, though, is you might notice I'm not wearing my coat. I'm not wearing my hat or my gloves. I got my skinny, no-heat-holding chicken arms out in here. From just the electric fireplace running in here, it's shockingly comfortable in this thing, and it's not being actively heated. I've been working on this for over an hour now, and it is still very comfortable in this RV. What I'm not saying is this is a Four Seasons RV, and I don't recommend that. If it's going to be freezing temperatures, I do recommend that you get this thing winterized. But uh, the fact is, short of it being hard freezing, I am very impressed with how well this is managing its cabin temperature even despite the big windows in the slide this is not an uncomfortable experience in here all right so when we start looking at this thing and we start talking towing i really i really want to be able to call it comfortably half ton towable but i don't know that it's necessarily appropriate to do that considering they actually built this thing with a good cargo capacity. There's such a catch-22 in the RV business. Um, if you want to make an RV uh, legally safely towable by more vehicles, you build it with absolute minimum cargo capacity. But if you want to build something with absolutely decent cargo capacity, uh, a manufacturer starts to limit the vehicles that are comfortable and safe to tow it. Well. This time, they went with one that gives you more cargo capacity, which I don't think is a wrong answer, considering this thing has good storage. I think if they went with light cargo capacity, you would very easily overload this thing. So I'm glad they didn't do that. They didn't cheap out on the axles. The downside to that is the GVW of this thing is just a smidge below 10,000 pounds. Now, there are certainly some half tons that can handle that. But, you know, if you're going to go through mountains... If you're going to go through more demanding terrain, uh, that that might not be a good fit for you. Now, if you're in flatland southern Michigan where we don't get crazy winds and weather, yeah, you know what? A half ton might handle this thing, uh, assuming it's a more capable half ton. So uh, a more safe recommendation is a three quarter, but there are some half tons in some scenarios that could possibly work for this thing. Uh, that is why 
when people say, hey, I've got a Ford with a V8. Can I tow this? I don't know. Like they're, Knowing what you can tow safely, that's a, if someone doesn't want to take the time to really have a serious conversation about it, I don't think they're really interested in your safety. They're just more interested in the sale. You know what I mean? Got the stable step standard on here. Wildwood was one of the very first stick and tin brands to do that. Got the little mini camp kitchen that hides under that L-shaped peninsula countertop right there. And I love this because uh, it's a chunk of space that otherwise would be kind of janky to get to they make it more readily accessible now if we look in that refrigerator you see that there's one of those little garden sprayer hoses uh stored in there that will connect to that uh or not gas grill quick connect the uh water naturally quick connect to the left of the gas grill there is a propane cooker hooker down below here but we have to address this sticker that is staring us in the face that i may have conveniently left flashing on the screen for a little bit so what's going on here for a long time uh, Wildwood has wanted to offer a fiberglass option to their customers, or Salem, obviously, as we're looking at it. Now, in the smaller little single axles in the toy haulers, in the FSX division, they had a fiberglass option they called Platinum, mostly because it, it changes the RV to a Platinum series color. Well, the big brothers here decided, what if we kind of jump on that bandwagon? And they are now offering a Platinum fiberglass swaption uh, away from the common corrugated skin. Now, a quick point here, because I, I, I really like to dive a little bit deeper. A lot of people will say, yeah, 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 it's fiberglass, and they will let you assume that it's an aluminum skeleton. This is not. This is what's called hung fiberglass. Some people call it a hard wall camper, but that, that's a little bit generic. Um, this is fiberglass skin, yes, but it is over the top of the traditional wooden skeleton, very similar to a Cherokee black label, if you're familiar with something like that. And I think if we're calling a spade a spade and a duck a duck, Forest River probably wouldn't like this, uh, me sharing this, but the fact is that's probably exactly what this group is doing. They're trying to find a way to combat the success that Cherokees had with the Black Label Edition fiberglass swaption they also offer. Uh, for the 23 season, they are now offering a uh, one of those little brackets up there so that if you want to get one of those telescopic ladders, you can get up to that fully walkable roof, which really helps address a question people uh, would give me all the time in previous years. Like, hey, Josh, you know, you said it's a fully walkable roof, but there's no ladder. I was always of the understanding that no ladder meant not walkable. And that's really not true, and it hasn't been for a long time. But... There hasn't really been a way that I could show and demonstrate that for you, so I like that they're kind of uh, upfitting that now. Uh, the uh, stabilizer jacks have seen a nice little upgrade. Now, in a sense they have, in a sense they haven't, because uh, the Salem Wildwood Group have been using JT Strongarm stabilizer jacks on their jacks uh, for several seasons now. So I actually had uh, credited this brand with best-in-class campsite stability for several years. Well, a lot of brands have since uh, upgraded to the new LCI Quick Drop Stabilizer, which essentially has a strong arm stabilizer jack built in. So this brand's not doing anything less than they used to. They're just accomplishing the same thing in a little bit different way. If you're really paying attention, though, you notice something a little bit different on this? The tinted windows. That is not something this family of RVs traditionally saw. The stick and tin Salem's and Wildwoods normally had completely non-tinted windows, which made just tons of light pour on the inside of the RV. It made it look and feel fantastic. Kind of like when I look in a funhouse mirror that makes me look skinnier than I am. Makes me look and feel fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. But when this video began, I made a big stink about how they're offering solar now. So for a, a season or two, what they've been doing is up on the roof, there's a big solar prep plug where if you wanted to add had a, uh, a roof panel, you could do that. But they weren't actually offering anything. And this season, they actually did not intend to do so. But I had recorded a couple of these, and I had mentioned that they're not offering solar. And folks, the people have spoken. I sent the comments off those videos to the factory brand manager who went, all right, all right, we'll do it. So, because of you folks at home, they are now offering an optional 200 watt solar package with 30 amp controller. 30 amp controller means you should be able to expand on that a little bit. Is it standard? No. But is it available and covered under the factory warranty? Because of you? Yes, it is. Now, a lot of times I like to leave you a link in the video description to check for pricing and availability. Uh, well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, certainly. What I meant to say was I'll leave you a link in the description to check for similar floor plans. 
But as I kind of mentioned when this first began, there's not really another one exactly like this. They went about it a little bit different way. So it's not completely a unicorn, but it's 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 close. It's got a little bit, a little bit of a like a, a button buck unicorn. What what? We gotta come up with a name for a button buck unicorn. An <laughs> A nubby corn. <laughs> oh, snowflake in the throat. Okay. If they ate a snowflake in the eye, I just ate a snowflake down the throat, down the lungs. I'm done. <laughs> so take care. Stay safe. Have fun. Watch out for those snowflakes, everyone.